One of the biggest objections to the view that a conscious observer is necessary to collapse the wave function is that collapse is really only caused because of interaction with a measuring device. In other words, it is not the act of an observer measuring that causes collapse. What really happens is the measuring device interacts with the particle and causes it to collapse. The conscious observer has nothing to do with this. We've already dealt with this objection thoroughly in our video, The Measurement Problem, in our video which explains the delayed choice quantum eraser experiment. But what if there was an interaction-free experiment? An experiment where particles have no interaction with the measuring device and collapse is still caused. Well, in fact, there was just such an experiment performed in 1994 by Anton Zellinger and his team. The paper on the experiment was called Experimental Realization of Interaction-Free Measurements. And they directly demonstrated what we have shown to be the case in other videos, that interaction is not the cause of ultimate collapse, but it is the knowledge of which path information that actually causes collapse. Here is a simplified explanation of how the experiment demonstrated collapse without interaction. Take the double slit experiment. Firing particles at a double slit will cause them to act like waves and interfere with each other, causing an interference pattern on the other side to appear. This is because we don't know the exact location of each particle, so the probability distribution for each particle acts like a wave and spreads out. However, if we attempt to find the exact location of the particle, we can place a measuring device over slit A, and now, because we know every time a particle travels through slit A, we'll know the exact time it goes through slit A, thereby giving us its location. Astonishingly, the fact that we know the location of all the particles that go through slit A changes how the particles are. Now, they no longer act like waves, but like particles or little bits of matter, and therefore no longer create an interference pattern, but a clump pattern, meaning little bits of matter went through the slit, not spread out waves. The result changes and therefore the particles have different properties just because we decided to measure their position. So basically, if we don't know the exact path or which slit the particle goes through, it spreads out and acts like a wave. But if we place a measuring device at one slit and find out which slit it goes through, then since we know the exact path it took, it acts like a particle instead of a spread out wave. Now some say the measuring device is just interacting and causing the particle to collapse from a wave into a particle and thus collapse is just caused by interaction. Interfering with the wave causes it to collapse to one definite position. But there is an important key element missing here, and that is, if we place a measuring device at A and shoot particles at the double slit, we have not placed a second measuring device over slit B. However, when particles go through that slit as well, they also collapse to one definite position, even though there was no measuring device there to interact with. But how could this be? If interaction is causing collapse, then they could only collapse when they go through A, not through B. But despite this, particles collapse when they go through both slits, not just one, and thus for particles that go through B, we have an interaction-free collapse, which is what was demonstrated in 1994. As they open their paper with, we have demonstrated experimentally that one can ascertain the presence of an object inside an interferometer without interacting with it. But what is causing collapse in slit B? The only logical conclusion is what we've been arguing for in previous videos. The only difference that happens when there is no measuring device and when there is one placed is our knowledge of the system. When there is no measuring device and the particles are randomly shot at the double slit, we have no clue which path they take. So the probability distribution of where the particle could be spreads out. However, if we measure at one slit, we know the path information and we know when a particle goes through slit A. And we'll also know if a particle doesn't go through slit A, but makes it to the other side, it could only have gone through slit B. Therefore, the only difference in regards to slit B is the path information the observer, we, know about the system. And collapse is about what the observer knows, not about interaction. The experiment coheres with the other data we have gone over. Quantum mechanics provides us with a picture of reality that our knowledge or choices affect the experimental outcome. As Anton Zellinger says, we are not just passive observers, and this experiment provides excellent evidence of this and correlates with the mountain of data we've already gone over in previous videos. The conclusion is inescapable. As Sir Rudolf Peirce said, you see, the quantum mechanical description is in terms of knowledge 
and knowledge requires somebody who knows. 